Our pledge today is from the special games uh, May 18th in uh, Santa Clara, California. And then our Stars and Stripes Forever arranged for Marimba, which I thought was kind of an interesting one I found. Governor Dick. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our Pledge of Allegiance, and we will be led by Brandon Pham. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Homestead for for how many years now, Chuck? Um, 20. 20. 20 years. And he is a um, Hickson Fellow, a Walter Zeller Fellow, a member of the Tablet of Honor. He is a member of the Kiwanis Children's Fund Bounder Circle. He has ridden in the Rose Parade. All right. And he holds the Eliminate Project Centennial Award, the Eliminate Project Recognition Award, along with his wife, Amelia, and is a major donor to the Eliminate Project. He has also been the Eliminate Project District Advocate and has participated in a site visit to Senegal for the Eliminate Project. And I tell you what, I've never seen a couple more energetic for um, a cause than Amelia and, and, and Chuck. It's, it's, it was amazing to see them. I mean, uh, they marketed, they were energized ev at every event. Um, so I can't say enough about him. So with uh, a lot of pleasure and a lot of pride uh, to just say that this man is a, is a friend, um, I would like to present Chuck Ugliuza for um, our speaker today. And I, I know that you're gonna be excited over his, his uh, presentation. Thank you, Janet, and thank you for those uh, kind words. Um, our friendship does go back many years, and thank you for that. Uh, before I get started, um, first of all, I was going to tell Cal to say hello to uh, Kathy, but she has come on to the call, so Cal, you, you're relieved of that duty. But I'm glad to see Kathy here because I will say that Kathy is making decisions for you all for the Kwanis organization that are the right decisions. So continue to support her. She is a great person and a great lady. 
And uh, with that being said, um, I'm certainly not my home club, but I am in my hometown club. So thank you all for inviting me and making me uh, feel welcome as you always do. So we're going to give you a, um, what I call serve with passion. And um, this is just a little bit of what Amelia and I have done um, in Latin America through the last couple of years, um, just to give you a little uh, history of that or a preview. So I start with a quote, you will get all you want in life if you help enough other people to get what they want. And I believe you can agree with me that that uh, is very true in Kiwanis. I always like to start with our mission. Kiwanis is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to improving the world one child and one community at a time. We, if you can only help one child that's what we have to help. Don't, you know, some, some people think we have to help thousands and thousands, but focus on helping. If everybody just helped one person in this world, just think how much better our world would be. So before we get headed out to uh, Latin America, Colombia, Santa has to pass through Florida. And uh, there's a couple of pictures of Santa in a couple of events that we do here in Florida over the uh, past couple of years. Uh, I believe last year we saw um, or provided gifts for over 12,000 children throughout uh, South East Florida, Southwest Florida, Africa, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Ecuador, and Panama. Um, and uh, not saying that Santa was able to go to all those locations personally, but uh, we certainly were able to assist in getting gifts to some children in those other areas as well and have plans to go to some of those areas. In fact, we were supposed to be in Uganda, Africa in the end of March, beginning of April, and unfortunately COVID uh, put a stop to that, but our tickets are still available and we are planning to go as soon as we can. So as we arrive to Columbia, you'll see on the left side, the welcome sign that they uh, put up for us as we come in and friends of ours welcome us to um, the area we went to Columbia. And this is a fairly new club that we opened uh, back in 2017, 18. Uh, as you see, the members are, for the most part, um, you know, in their late 20s, early 30s. And that is um, what we were trying to pr proceed with is opening a lot of clubs with younger members. Um, again, with the passion for service that we all have and also have some other members in that club who are the experience of the club to provide the guidance and leadership that is needed for the younger members. So in the last few years, we have opened doors through service because that's what it takes to open those doors is doing service. And, and this, the Easton Club, I know from what I've seen and the clubs, I, the, the meetings I visited has been very, very active in service. And I thank you for that. But again, we need more hands to do more work. And we also need to work with partners that we work with throughout the organization. And I will tell you, for example, one of the partners that we've partnered up with in Colombia is the National Police. And we need them going in some of the areas that we go, and you'll see that in the few, next few slides, but they have partnered with us and, and they have members within the organization because of that partnership. Again, Kiwanis of Latin America has been characterized by bringing its gift of service to include all types of vulnerable populations. I will say one of the things that I noticed is, and when I was in New Jersey, um, our office was in Irvington, which is not a upscale part of the state of New Jersey. And I, I looked at these areas and said, you know, there are people who are vulnerable in these areas. I will tell you, in my visits to Columbia over the past 20 or so years, there is not a place in the United States that some of these places I have gone in Columbia that it's almost, you know, it, it, the, the, the level of poverty is just so much different. And it just amazes me, although we need to help people no matter where they are in this world. That, that to me is so important. And again, you know, leadership is certainly one of the pillars and needs to be one of the pillars of Kiwanis. We need to build leaders and, and, and create leaders, but we have great leaders. We show that every year in our, you know, 
our um, elections to trustee to vice president, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of, there are, you know, there are people running for those positions. I wish we had a little bit more um, difference in, run, you know, who runs for those positions, but that is a story for another day. And per Walt Disney, you know, all of our dreams can come true. You just have to have that courage to pursue them. So we get into Columbia and this is gear on wheels. The, um, the top photo you see, Oh, the, actually, the bottom right photo you see is us getting to the area. You know, the, that's that's one of the main roads that we were traveling on. Then you see the top picture where we get into this area that there are no roads to go where we're going. And you see the two trucks and we were the truck behind them because I had taken that picture. But these drivers just know how to get to where they're going and that, you know, they're you don't see a road there, but they know how to get where they're going and get there. At the bottom left, you see a bunch of, uh, you see three kids and I think one adult is sitting at the uh, far right. They put a rope up um, across the road and they're hoping that you stop and give them food, water or something, money, whatever, um, to help them because that is what basically what they're doing all day is sitting out there hoping that people drive by and provide them food. Of course, you know, if you continue to drive, they're going to let that rope drop because they don't want you to break the rope because that is a way for them to produce, you know, food and water. Um, of course, we had food, water, and some gifts with us as we drove. And, you know, it seemed like every place we, you know, that there was a rope up, we tended to stop and provided them something. Um, as you see in the top left picture is the National Police. They are with us. They come with us. Um, they they um, stay with us in the, the places we go for the most part. Um, this picture I took on the right is a gas station. Now you would say, no way, that's not a gas station. Yes, it is. They get the gas from Venezuela, which is very, very inexpensive, but the gas is pure. So you have to be very careful on what you put into your vehicle um, it's not like we go to the pump and, you know, I'll have all those additives and everything else. This is pure gas that they're taking out. They suck it out, put it into those, uh, you see the Coca-Cola cans on the bottom right there, the bottles, they put the gas in there and then they put it into your car. Um, I will say the gas was cents on the dollar. <laughs> it was very, very cheap, but uh, yes, that was a gas station. And uh, probably if they knew I took that picture, I probably wouldn't be here today. Then we get to where we're going and you see this area. And I said to my, you know, I, the first time I went there, I was amazed because this is beautiful. This is a beach and water and an area, but it's off of a desert. In other words, we went through the deserts of Colombia and in the Northern part of Colombia to get to this area, which is still part of the desert, but there's a beach there. Unfortunately, that water is not very helpful for the people that live here because of the fact that they it's salt water, number one. So it's good for fishing, it's good for food, but it's not good for drinking. And that also goes for the facility that we stayed at. And I did not take a picture of that, but the facility that we stayed at, I believe Amelia and I probably stayed in the presidential suite because we had a mattress that was on the ground. The mattress literally is on the ground. There was people that slept in hammocks. There was people that slept in tents. There was people that slept on the ground. We had four walls, the electricity worked for six hours. Uh, normally from midnight to 6 a.m. And we were able to plug in our cell phones and, you know, recharge so we could take pictures the next day. But, uh, you know, we were probably in the best suite of the house, which again was um, a mattress on the floor. So we have our bicycles delivered. And this particular trip, we took uh, and saw about 3,000 uh, people, uh, you know, both adults and children. But one of the things we wanted to bring in is bicycles because the people that live here, they normally, if they go to school or they go to work, they're walking two or three miles each way to school and work. So bicycles is a way for them to get there a little bit quicker to make sure that they stay in school or go to work. And we were able to raise um, funds and have donations of 500 bicycles, which this is how we had to have them delivered in these trucks you know, just stacked in, piled up, and uh, dro driven in, and, uh, and you know, so the 3,000 people we saw, 500 of them got a bicycle, and they, that is like a, 
uh, winning the lottery for them. It, it was just, you know, amazing to see. And um, as we see on this uh, slide here, you see at the bottom picture, you see a lot of people. They were not pushing, they were not shoving. They were very friendly. You know, of course they, they all got something. Um, the family units got food and water as well. Um, some of the children got bikes, some adults got bikes to go to work. But again, they were very, very pleasant in the sense that they, they were not pushy. They were not, you know, in our face to get something from us. Um, they appreciated what was brought to them. And, you know, every village we went to was a very, very similar. Also, as we got into the different villages, um, they would also want to do some type of dance or artistic event for us. And this was one of them with their, as you see, their, you know, colorful um, uh, dresses doing a, uh, you know, a typical dance in Colombia. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just amazing to see that. As we go on, again, some other, you know, the kids that got some bikes, a little girl, and of course, Amelia, when she goes to these areas as well, she also brings dog food with her. And uh, there were some dogs and you see on the left hand side there, she's, you know, giving the dog some water and some uh, dog food. Again, just some more kids that we were able to uh, help out. Um, you love the smiles. The kid on the right just, uh, you know, warms my heart with that smile. And, and the girl on the left as well. Um, but again, you know, this is this will now allow them to maybe stay in school, um, you know, where they're going. So as we left that area, we went to uh, uh, Cabo de Valle Guerra, which is part of this area. It's, it's all, you know, part of one area. And uh, although Santa didn't make a physical appearance, Santa certainly brought gifts and water and food to this area as well. Now, one of the things, um, um, Again, you know, the, the kids come up, they're, you know, the family units are waiting in line, they get gifts, but they're not, again, they're not pushing, they're not shoving to get there. Um, the picture on the right is the governor from a couple years ago, uh, Governor Rigo. And again, just, you know, handing out um, food. You also see, again, the police behind us, uh, you know, with us. And Santa visits continue. Now, one of the things too is um, on the right hand side, you see some medicine and you see the uh, Moises, who is the president of uh, Nativos. Um, he's a prior CKI member, but he never joined Kiwanis because he was never asked. And um, in 2000, November of 2017, Amelia started contacting uh, prior CKI members in Colombia through WhatsApp, not even going to them personally, but uh, you know, going and basically uh, just through a WhatsApp application, contacting them. And within about four days, we had a club of 22 members formed through WhatsApp. So there are different ways that we can get membership than going out face to face. But what he does, Moises, who is an MD, um, he does bring med you know medicine for their stomach. Um, I believe this was for their stomach to you know take care of some issues. And he would... Um, provide that to them. He was the one that would dispense it. Um, you know, nobody else because he was the one that was licensed, but uh, he would do that for every child in that village. He would bring enough for them um, to supply that medical need that they need as well. Um, so they, you know, don't get diseases. So as COVID hit, we also got involved again, Amelia and I, unfortunately were not able to go to help because of COVID and you know staying safe but we uh we certainly financially uh helped out in the in the area of santa marta sierra nevada and uh basically we provided uh bags and uh the supplies and coloring books and uh, uh sanitizer and face masks they didn't these children don't have any of these things um or these families don't have these things in the areas that we go into you know they they would not even consider even getting them if we wouldn't hand them out to them. So, and again, one of the things, um, you know, if we can't get a transportation, we, we put everything in a taxi and pay a taxi to go to the areas that we're going And Taxis are more than willing to do so because this is income for them as well to, you know, be able to drive to these areas. 
And Moises there is again on the uh, right hand side, uh, masked up, uh, going in some areas as well, uh, providing medical needs. Um, the little old girl on the right, just, you know, I, I love that hanging your, you know, lifting your feet up and, uh, you know, just waiting, you know, for her time. So again, you know, going into another area in the Amazons in Colombia, and uh, again, Moises is there, and uh, along with other members, there's other members around him, but he just happened to be in the one in the picture. But again, providing, you know, the, the necessary needs of what they needed, the face masks, they didn't have those, those were provided to them. The coloring books that Amelia and I distributed um, over the last year and um, we started out with 3000 coloring books to go to Indianapolis. Of course, Indianapolis never took place and we ended up distributing 55,000 around the world, um, every world. I'm, and I'm talking Malaysia and Taiwan and Europe and Africa and um, the Philippines and Latin America and Canada and throughout the United States we ended up distributing 55,000 coloring books um, throughout the world because there was a need that we saw to, just to make kids happy, if only for, you know, an hour that they could, you know, do this. It at least gave them something to do during this pandemic. So that little dog that Amelia is feeling, I had to bring this into it, is, is our buddy Cabo. And for those who have followed us on social media know that Cabo is our dog. And Cabo came from Cabo de, ba Cabo de Bayo in Colombia. And that little dog Amelia is feeding, that is Cabo. And the uh, gentleman on the left, so as we left that desert area and went back into the city, we went to Mr. Vet. Well, after he uh, you know, did what he needed to do in order to get Cabo from that area of Colombia to Bogota, um, he also now is a member of Kiwanis because we asked him. Um, the little girl in the middle, now we didn't have the dog, we had the dog with us, but he's not in the picture. But that is uh, Miley Alejandra, who, God rest her soul, she did pass a few years ago. She had what was called the butterfly disease. And if you don't know what that is, I would encourage you to look it up. There is a foundation called the Deborah Foundation that Amelia and I have been involved with for about 18 years now or so since we met Mary Alejandra. And uh, basically her skin would just constantly peel the inside of her body too, the same way. She, um, we met her when she came to Florida to go up to, um, I think she was going up to Boston for uh, some surgery. And uh, we took her to Disney. And ever since then, we would go and visit her every time we were in Columbia. Um, she was the sweetest girl in that picture. She was probably about 17 years old. Um, Again, she passed uh, probably about three or four months ago, but uh, she she just touched our heart and was a godsend to us, um, you know, in showing us that even with her um, disease that was not cure, you know, it's definitely not a curable disease and it's a very rare disease, but, you know, she was just, she would do drawings for us. She would always be smiling no matter how much pain she was in. Um, that That is just something I think in Kiwanis just, it, it makes us, do what we do every single day. Um, and then Cabo coming home, um, leaving Bogota and flying home to Miami. Uh, we were able to get the necessary paperwork, all the everything for him to come home. And Cabo is going to be two on October 31st. If we did all this, imagine everything that we can do together as one. And we truly believe that, that we have to work as an organization, work as one family who we are in Kiwanis. With that, I just want to thank you. Um, I hope I didn't take too much time today, but uh, we want to thank you for everything that you do for the organization and everything you do for the kids of your community. Thank you. Chuck, um, um, I do have a, a question for you. Yes, sir. It was quite a presentation and, um, and all you did for those children is remarkable. But since you had to fly there, how did you get all those supplies and and water and gifts uh, down for you to de deliver them? So one of two ways we either purchase them there uh, through, you know, through Kiwanis and through Amelia and I. 
Um, or we have also shipped things, um, uh, you know, in, in cart in uh, what are they called? Um, I can't think of the word, but you know, the containers, you know, we'll ship containers out as well. Um, depending on the cost, sometimes it's cheaper to buy the things there. And, you know, the water and food we normally would purchase there, the, you know, and the food was the basic rice, beans, you know, things like that, that, that would not spoil, would not, you know, that we could take out to areas and not have to worry about refrigeration and stuff like that. But uh, uh, most of it was either purchased in location or it was uh, shipped to the location um, and, you know, then distributed, taken in vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, some of these areas we're going in, like, you know, the area that we stayed at, the, the hotel that we stayed at, um, you know, there was nothing really. I mean, there yeah, there were some convenience stores that you could go in and get some, you know, bottled water, you know, some things that, you know, they would get the deliveries every week or so. But, uh, you know, for the most part, no. But I will tell you, probably the best thing about this, and I, and I don't want to say this in a bad way, but uh, the one day, you know, they basically, you know, they, they made dinner for us every night at the hotel. And the one day they said, you know, do you want lobster tonight? And we said, sure, why not? And they said, that'll be about $11 per person. <laughs> I, I don't know about you all, but uh, $11 does not even buy a, a, a leg in, you know, a, a a claw in uh, Florida. So um, that, that was uh, probably the highlights of uh, our food experience in, in Columbia. Chuck, um, I know we have a number of uh, um, former teachers in our club. And I was just wondering, are these children getting educated or not? For the most part, probably not um, getting to school for them. Again, you know, traveling two to three miles each way to get to school by feet, by foot. You know, there's no buses, there's no public transportation in this area. You know, depending on the areas we're talking about. Now, if you're in Bogota, yes, the kids are going to school in the major city. But if you're in these outskirts areas and this area, which is in the northern, you know, near Venezuela, uh, most likely the kids are not going to school. Um, they might, you know, their, their parents might be trying to teach them, but, you know, there's also different dialects of the language. There's also a lot of Venezuelans in this area because it's so close to Venezuela. So they're, they're actually leaving Venezuela because the conditions are even that much worse and trying to get into this area of Colombia. And unfortunately, they're, they're undocumented in Colombia. So they, you know, it's also tough for them to, you know, do much as either, but, you know, they're, they're, collecting food on the side of the road or stuff like that. Um, but again, and then again, I think some of these, you know, getting bicycles in their hands may have helped because of the fact that they can now have a means of transportation to get to school and or work. I think, Skip, they're probably more concerned about getting food and water than education in some of these areas. Just an amazing uh, story, Chuck. Um, and I have a student at Benton um, that came to me and his name was Esteban and he was from Colombia. And his dad was uh, a police officer in Colombia. And Este uh, could speak no English at all when he first came. And uh, I apologize for the bird again. <laughs> I think she hears my voice. But uh, when es you know, Esty came, could not speak any English, and by the end of the year, he was speaking fluent English. And I, a couple of years ago, I got an email from his from his stepfather, uh, and he was um, cut into the gifted program outside. Of, they were actually in in Virginia at the time, and uh, he was put into the gifted program. But he had such a great heart and uh, such an artistic, ch you know, child. So. Um, you know, I can't imagine, you know, all of those kids would steal my heart. So, I mean, which one, I, I, I probably would not want to leave them. So it must be hard for you and Amelia to actually leave them, you know, leave them. Um, I'm sure that they attach themselves to you as being somebody that's new in their environment and is kind. 
Yeah, your, they, um, are they their excitement? I imagine they're excited. Leave some of these kids, some you know, and and there's been ones that you know wrap wrap their arms around your leg as you're trying to walk away. You know, they want you to stay there. Um, and we, and we do as much as we possibly can with what we have, um, you know, to help the children, not only in Colombia but also in Ecuador and Panama, um, as well in. And as well as on Africa, you know, I'm also a member of a club in the Wakiso Club in Africa in Uganda, and we help, uh, you know, children there as well. Um, one of the things I always said about Kiwanis is, you know, our boundary of our clubs are not the streets and avenues that are in our own cities. Our boundary is Mother Earth, and we truly need to believe that. I have a question. Yes, sir. Chuck, uh Columbia was always given a lot of bad news or about the drug problem. What do you know about that when you were there? I mean, how much did I bring back? No, just kidding. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but it was always blamed. A lot of yes. things were blamed on Columbia from the drug uh, problem I, we had. When I first started going there, things were a little bit because of the narc uh, that was very involved. And I will say, you know, from my understanding, you know, although there's peace and there was uh, you know, uh, peace documents that were drawn up, you know, they're still out in the areas. There's probably still, you know, drugs being, you know, cocaine and marijuana and stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just like there is in the United States, you know, un unfortunately, I think, uh, uh, legal substances are everywhere. Um, you know, I, I live in Miami and I can tell you they're probably rampant here. It's just, you know, do we, how much of that do we see? is the question. <laughs> My experiences in Colombia were quite different, I believe. Uh, they weren't sure whether they should fear the police or not. Uh, there were roadblocks with police who wanted to know where we're going. My driver had a gun sitting on the floor next to him to protect us. And I was on business and I was at uh, uh, a very uh, high drug area. Our product that I was dealing with was a white powder, which made it rather difficult to take samples home. <laughs> and uh, the guys that, I, the engineers I was dealing with there had a hedge of, uh, I guess it was cocoa or whatever. Anyway, something that if I were to try to bring a piece of it home, I would be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, there's certainly definitely still roadblocks that, you know, when you know, they're there, but uh, for the most part, the experiences I have with the police have been very, very good. They've been very um, uh, loyal to Kiwanis. They've been very protective. Um, and in some areas, you know, they absolutely will, you know, they'll bring more than, you know, they'll bring two or three vehicles along with us, depending on the area that we're going into. Um, I've always had the mentality and good or bad or indifferent, um, you know, even though I'm the gringo going into these areas, I just go and, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, there, of course, you know, my, my, my wife is from Colombia. Uh, she is from Bogota. And, uh, but I would have, you know, friends from Pennsylvania and New Jersey who would say, you know, well, how can you go into these areas and, you know, you're going to get kidnapped, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's not even on the forefront in my mind. It's just, it's getting into these areas, helping these kids and doing what the right thing is to do. Um, and, and, you know, it is what it is. I wanted, I wanted this meeting to be the start of our, our new Qantas year, kind of representing um, who were heroes in my life. And, and Chuck is one of those as far as, and, and Amelia. I mean, it, it's kind of a twosome, it's a twosome there. It's a partnership, always has been. And, uh, but, um, Heroes walk among us, and they definitely are two that have been walking among uh, us Kwanians for, for many years. And we are so appreciative of everything that you've done and your commitment to, um, to Kwanis and to um, all of the children uh, that you're involved in. Um, so everybody, we hope you have a wonderful week and we are now uh, going to say goodbye to all of our friends. And so the uh, 
East and Kiwanis meeting is, is a wrap. Thank you, Mr. Bill.